Okay, so take a breath with me. <sighs> it's been a really full morning, hasn't it? Yeah. So to prepare yourself to receive this beautiful information, love, and guidance, let yourself just drop inside. You can close your eyes. Just relax your body. And take another breath. And let it come all the way into your body, all the way past your heart, your belly, into your feet, into the ground. And just keep your breath going like that, nice and long and slow. And as we prepare for this first channel of the day, directly from the numerology presentation, remember that today is 3-3, three, three, a perfect day for a divine catalyst, for playfulness, for joy, for receiving the love that is not only here in the room, that not only comes from these beautiful teachers, Adiranda and Cryon, but that comes from the ancient divine source of all love that surrounds us in our galaxy and comes in on a wave of benevolent love to live with us, to play with us, and to help us be the divine catalysts in our own life. Ah, so it is good day to you, huh? <laughs> Very nice to see you, your divine radiance, your energy spreading out and moving forward in this world. Dearest beings of light, today is a 3-3 day, the harmony of all. It is also, when you add the 2 and the 1 and the 8, an 8 day. Ah, so you are abundant in your knowledge. You know, one of the things that we love experiencing with the dearest friend Cryon and Lee Carroll is to get you to know you better than anything else in the whole world. That is what you are here for, yes? To know who you are, what you are doing, why you are here, what is your purpose, what is your mission, what is your teaching, what is your understanding, what is your happening on this planet, since you've come from hmm, some other planet for sure. <laughs> Understand that that is our mission, is to help you know you, help you understand you, help you breathe into you and live the joy that is yours as your birthright. The love that is yours as your birthright. The experience of your wisdom that we know is in there somewhere. You just need to dig around a bit to find it. Huh? And when you dig around a bit, you get surprised by yourself, by the knowledge, and you think, oh, Hmm, where did that wisdom come from? Oh, it came from you. And yet, as you see you, sometimes you feel that you are separate from that wisdom. As you see you, sometimes you feel like that you just don't quite have it all together. Huh? Well, we are here to tell you that you do indeed have it all together. You just get the opportunity to search a bit for those answers. And we're going to give you a couple of tools that may help. Is that all right? Mm, yes. We know this may surprise you, but we would say one of the first tools you can use to discover you is to sit in the stillness and not talk so much to you. <laughs> just be still. 15 minutes a day, 5 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, we don't care. Set a timer so your brain can let go of the time and just be still. 
And then we would ask you to write. Write with your hand, not with your fingertips on an electronic keyboard, but to just write. Do you know that the act of writing gets all that little garbage out of your brain and puts it on the paper, and then you never need to read it again? It may have something very particular. It may have something just, I, I'm going to go to the grocery store. I didn't like what happened yesterday. I'm going to get carrots at the grocery store today. Blah, 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 blah. And if you just write blah, 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 that is okay because you get all that blah, blah, blah out of your brain. And that's a better place on the paper than in your brain, yes? Yes. And then we ask you, to then, after you do the sitting in the stillness and not talking to yourself and get it out, the blah, blah, blah out on the paper, then the wisdom can come through. And we ask you to just ask yourself, we're going to do it right now, if that is all right, in just a few moments. All is relative in time, isn't it? We're going to ask you to put your hand on your heart and just take a deep breath. This is your time for listening. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. If you don't feel comfortable closing your eyes, we don't care. And we want you to ask a very simple question. We will repeat the question and then you repeat it to yourself without moving your mouth because that will distract your energy. But just inside. Let's take another deep breath. What is it that I get to know now that is in my highest good and my highest joy to know about myself? What is it that I get to know now that is in my highest good and my highest joy to know about myself now. Take a deep breath. And again. That knowledge is there, dearest. That inside wisdom is there. It just gets to bubble up to the surface. And when your ego talks to you and says, oh, but we didn't hear anything, well, your ego is not the one that's listening. Your heart is. That is why we bring your hand to your heart to remind you of the heart-centered being that you are to remind you of your love, your own wisdom, and who you are here on this planet, a divine being of light. We came all this way just for you. We are honored by your presence. We are honored by your love. We feel your love in our energy, in our vessel Marilyn's heart. We feel you, and we wish to hold you in that state of unconditional love, so you can feel you too. Huh? Take a deep breath. We love you very much. We see you and we feel you. And we bid you namaste. Namaste. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. It's a time to inspect for just a moment the reality of what is taking place right now. There are several time attributes 
going on. There's the now you have as you sit and you listen to me. And there's the now that others have as they listen to me in what they think is later. But it's still now for them and it's now for you. And you will both hear the same thing and both experience the same energy. Which now is now? And the answer is yes. I want you to ask yourself what is happening right now. Let's talk to those just for a moment, both in another time frame and here, who have been brought to this voice because someone else asked them to listen. In other words, it's not something you would do, dear one. And you know who you are. Without any judgment in this, it's simply a fact. There are those listening to the voice right now. And you're painting a picture, if you're awake. You're painting a picture. Here I am, mostly sitting down and listening to a man in some kind of a trance, he says. Bring in some kind of an entity, he says, from another place that is a mystery to everyone. And the consciousness of this would say, it's not for me. I'm here, I'm listening as a gift to someone who is next to me, also listening. But for me, you might say, I don't want to be part of this airy-fairy stuff. It's just not that which I'm interested in. It's not that which I was born for. It's, it's for other people. Now the questions begin. If you're serious, now the questions begin. What softens your heart, dear one? I'm talking to the one who thinks this is too airy-fairy. What is it that softens your heart? Do you believe in love? Have you been in love with a child, with another human? Have you felt the overwhelming love, perhaps, of nature? Perhaps you've had that which an animal of some kind, a dog, a horse, you just want to hug them and hold them and, and feel airy fairy. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? It's not for you. Not the man in the chair who's channeling an entity from beyond. No, that's not for you. Honestly, but what is, is something that you can relate to. And I'm going to tell you something that you may disagree with. They're both airy fairy. They both feature something that every single human being can understand and appreciate. A multi-dimensional energy of love that goes beyond what the brain could possibly generate itself. And sometimes it comes from nature, sometimes it comes from the love of animals or the love of a child, or even when two people look in each other's eyes and feel it. The connection that is unexplainable. The beauty that is unexplainable. Dear one, you've just experienced the beginning of what we teach. You never have to pick up a cryon book. You never have to listen to another channel. But here's what I'd ask you to do. Understand what I just said. Peer more closely into that which is love for you. And in that, you may very well open up a piece of you that starts to become compassionate to other things in the world beyond what you are now. This may not ever be for you. All humanity is involved in this shift. Whether they believe in what is happening in this chair from this man or not. The ones who come from those systems of spirituality with rules that wouldn't let them come to this place 
are also involved in the airy fairy of the love of God, the love of nature. That beautiful energy that passes between human beings. This goes way beyond belief system into something that is so grand and so big that it encompasses every single human on the planet and asks the question, who are you? Tonight I would like to give you a series of most asked questions. But instead of calling the channel most asked questions for 2018, I'm going to call it odd answers. Because what you are experiencing is different. There is a paradigm shift that allows the one sitting in the chair that says this is too airy fairy for me to feel something. And they may feel it and not know what it is. You don't have to come back. You don't have to invest yourself in what they have called the esoterics or the new age. Invest yourself instead in understanding what that is inside you that generates compassion and love and follow that passion. But that's going to lead you right to the creative source. Thousands Thousands of humans who would never step foot in a building of worship believe in the almighty God as the creator of the planet because they step into nature and they know it. I made a statement once at the base of Mount Aconcagua. And in that South American place, I said, all mountain climbers believe in God. It's a statement of fact. Because they are embedded with it when they start relating to survival with Gaia, with nature, to the love of the planet. All of the things they embrace so much. They stand on the top of the mountain and they have a nirvana, a euphoria. They're in love with themselves in a way that is not egotistical because they understand they are part of everything. Even as the chilly air and the lack of oxygen is there, some even take off their masks for a moment just to say hello to the Creator. This is what I'm talking about. You see, there's far more than the man in the chair channeling about a shift. It's about the essence of compassion and love and where it takes you. What that next step might be for you. I want you to ponder these things. For in this paradigm shift that all of you are in, you're going to discover things you didn't expect. Some will be your strengths. Some will have a recalibration time. Some will actually go through a great deal. And in an old energy, you might call it negative darkness. In order to get to a place where you understand light better. To get to a place where your body starts to heal itself because you've allowed it to. And that's what happens when you start investing in the airy fairy things of love. Your body starts to react. And that reaction is often resulting in health, longer life, happiness that you didn't think you had before. The appreciation of beautiful things you didn't have before. That's the track, dear one, for all humanity. The potential is here. Not for you to join this movement. Not for you to believe in what is happening here. But instead to cognize there's something greater than yourself. 
that you are a partner with and that loves you. And you can feel it. Maybe for you it's the planet. Maybe for you it's the love of others. But you take that and you start working with it and the rest is life extension. I speak of practical things here because that which is happening in the shift is probably the most practical thing that's going on on the planet right now. All around you, all of this turmoil, all of this uncertainty, all of this change, dear ones, is all part of the shift. Something I've been telling you for years is coming, is upon you now. Watch your news. I leave with this. The one who is frightened by the things they see are the ones who are trained to be frightened by the things they see. The ones who see the same things with a different reaction are using the elegance and the maturity of the knowledge that this is what change creates. Just like watching a young person grow up and the years that are difficult as they become child to adult. The human race is in that right now. The beginning of puberty, <laughs> of growing up. And with it comes all of the gyrations, the feelings, the emotions that you've seen before. Look to the future with hope, knowing that change is happening. It's not coming. It's here now. That's all for now. And so it is.